I'm 50 years old. I come from a family where both of my parents were college educated. I was raised in an upper middle class home. I went to college. I um, married a wonderful guy, my best friend in the whole world, had a really great life. Um, owned kangaroos and monkeys and lived ocean view for almost 20 years and owned a very successful barber shop on the east coast of Florida and uh, my husband had a brain injury. And over two and a half years ago the neurosurgeon uh, recommended no more intervention. He said he couldn't do anything else. There was just nothing else to be done and um, that Rick was imminently terminal and by imminent he meant like any day and so I said well we've lost everything. We've done all this uh, every intervention we could and we spent too much time in hospitals, too much time at doctors and uh, so I saved the last of what I could. I sold everything we owned that I could sell. I told my son, you know, this is it, we're going to go, we're going to have a good time and essentially somewhere along the line I had to prepare him for the fact that, you know, we expected his dad to just leave us, just to pass. We're going to all these state and national parks. We had very, very little money, you know, so we're living on darn near nothing and um, but we're having such a good time, and uh, we, you know, we went to Yosemite, and we we went to Guadalupe and um, the Grand Canyon, and he was in and out of the hospital a couple of times, and there were a couple of places uh, when he was in the hospital that were really, really unfriendly. There is a really, really, really big prejudice against homeless people, and uh, so much so that people who are homeless don't want other people to know we're homeless. And, I mean, I don't tell people I'm homeless, typically. I just say we're traveling. Most of us are just trying to find a place to sleep, trying to find a place to uh, be safe. That's it. We just want to live, you know. We just want to live. We all deserve that, and there is a culture in this country that wants to be, sh that, that seems to feel that, uh, somehow we're just moochers and um, we're lazy moochers, drug addicts, again the whole you know it's all negatives and um, I'm homeless because I'm honorable I'm homeless because I'm true I'm homeless because I'm loyal the cops are just absolutely the worst it's really horrible to be um, somebody who's always been law-abiding and uh, I've never had a problem with the police and to find myself um, avoiding them just really wanting to fly under the radar to not be noticed by the police. And that is a new experience. And uh, I think that um, I'll probably carry that experience with me to my grave. I have a new way of thinking about the police now. And it's not pretty because um, they are the natural enemy of the homeless person. They try to criminalize homelessness. They criminalize poverty. And what they're doing is they're marginalizing people who uh, or already a lot of a lot of people, you know, like I said, a lot of people are disabled, so they're marginalizing people who already feel marginalized. You've lost your occupation, you know, and um, you've lost your ability to really relate completely because for whatever reason, whatever disability you have. I was in a place where um, I'm supposed to be allowed to park. The private property owners say that it's okay for me to park there. I'm not d disturbing anything. I'm not bothering anyone. But the police literally come in and say, if you, I can't make you leave, but I'm going to make you wish you had. And, uh, you know, I don't care that your husband's recovering from surgery and you've got no place else to go. That's the thing I don't get about the whole, you know, I don't get why they don't offer us a hand up. At that point, I was really afraid. I was afraid not just, um, I was afraid they were going to try to take my kid. I was afraid of DCF because they made a big deal about him being, my son being at the library, sitting in front of the library. And I'm like, wow, how awful. My son, my teenage son is at the library on the computer. My God, you know, sitting on a blanket. That's just an awful thing, you know. How criminal. What a little thug, right? And I told him that I was in the parking lot the entire time. And he said, well, you know, that's good. That's something. And uh, he was just incredibly offensive and nasty. I don't understand the whole punitive nature of you're already down, so let me put my foot on your neck. Because that's how it feels. It feels really aggressive. We went to this um, world-famous neurosurgical institute in Arizona and Phoenix. They sent him there. He had a problem in Tucson and they ambulanced him down there. And they said, you know, we have no idea how he's walking and talking. But he is. 
and we don't want to make any more predictions. So at that point, I decided we're going to have to stop somewhere. I can't keep doing this. My son's 13 now. I've homeschooled, so, you know, and he's had an amazing time. There's been a lot more good than bad. People think that uh, you can stop, that it's easy to get a place. It's, it's really, really hard. Um, there's so many of us that are disabled, and just speaking for people I've met on the road, um, I know so many elderly people who are in like a $5,000 RV that they live on $600 a month. There's no way to get a place. There's no way really to stop. And so you just keep trying to find somewhere that you can, that you can park and be safe. So we decided to drive into Oregon. And um, we got to Coos Bay and I went to Aged and Disabled Services. And when I walked in the door, I looked on the wall. They have, you know, the wall of pamphlets for services. And it had a program called Spousal Pay. And uh, so I'm hoping to get into that program now and I've been working on it for two and a half months. <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> to be one of their success stories and get a place, and I love Eugene, I love the culture here, the people are amazing. If not, I, you know, I don't know what I'll do. Our income's $1,001 a month, and um, we're really blessed in that. It sounds ridiculous to say that, but we're kind of blessed. I've met people who were on disability that, you know, had even less than half. There are three of us, because my husband only has one blood vessel to the brain, I'm cautioned always by neurosurgeons to keep him cool. He can't get too hot. That's major league important. Because he has one blood vessel to the brain and he has a serious history of strokes. Um, what will happen is, is if he strokes, he's gone. Right now it's getting hot in Eugene and we have a black van. And um, so school's out June 18th. And I guess if we haven't managed to get a place, I'm already looking at like I'm gonna have to go somewhere, I'm gonna have to go to a state, a national park where it's cheaper <laughs> than the state parks. And um, either up in the mountains or on the coast and then try to figure out something for the fall. Whatever else happens, I'm really, really thankful for uh, the people that we have met that have been helpful. And um, I want people to know we're, you know, homeless people, uh, we're not the stereotype that you think we are. We're not uneducated, we're not violent criminals, um, you know, we're not um, drug addicts, I don't do drugs, I'm a vegan. <laughs> I don't do drugs, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Um, you know, um, I'm a good person. And um, I just was trying to make the best decision for my family to honor my husband. I wouldn't have wanted to been put in a home. It's something this has taught me is I don't really need things. Things are an option, but you do need a safe place to sleep. You know, you need a place that to sleep. You need to be able to take a shower. So that's kind of it. <laughs>